First of all, if you could just introduce yourself and uh, introduce a place. Okay. So my name is Cynthia Tom, and I am the founding director of A Place of Our Own. And A Place of Our Own is a lot of different things. It's mainly um, art-based workshops, lectures, art exhibitions, um, using found objects and to work through ancestral patterns of trauma and to learn to release it using art or to at least become conscious of it. You, you use the, or Aaron used the words ancestral pattern shifting. Yeah. So tell me about ancestral pattern okay. shifting. So, I'm kind of blank right now. So ancestral pattern shifting is um, a term I actually got from, I can't blink, so let's start all over again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so ancestral pattern shifting is looking at anything that brings you chronic heartache, but not looking at it as just yours. It comes from a long line of coping mechanisms for traumatic things that have happened to your family over the, the generations. And if you begin to look at what happened to your family, even if you don't know your family, you know based on where they, where they moved from. Like why did they come here? Or the better question is why did they leave? for unknown places. And then what are the coping mechanisms they developed? And then as the generations go on, it self implodes like addiction, violence, um, alcoholism. Um, for women, it's usually imposter syndrome, not good enough, serve everyone before yourself. You've taught all these things to cope with whatever your ancestors had to deal with because of colonization, forced migration, um, and extreme discrimination, just to mention a few. Thank you. The words that came to my mind were divine reception and human expression. Ooh. What do you think? Well, divine reception, I'm not sure what you mean, but that's I, I, I the I mean theme. the quality of, of receiving everything. Yes. yes, yes. And that's a practice that I'm constantly telling the women because most of them will tell you they've never received support, they've never had people ask, how are they feeling or what's the feeling about or um, so many of them have expressed not feeling so held or hugged and not just by us but myself or Jilly for the show but other people like each other and even the women who don't know each other today they're hugging each other because they understand um, but they're learning to receive like yeah. this is not you're learning how to, you don't have to learn how to give. If you're a woman of color, you're taught you have to give. Our women in general are taught you have to give and give and give to you to the detriment of yourself. But what we're learning is how to receive abundance, how to receive kindness. And uh, how is that uh, part of the creative process and how is the creative par process part of healing? So the way we do the creative process, well, like in the beginning of the workshops, we look at beliefs that hold you back and your family patterns, but we're using artistic tools like beliefs that hold you back are about you write these horrible beliefs that you are buying into on rocks and we ask people to carry that around on their bodies for a week and come back and talk about it and there's humor in the trauma and there's humor in how you treat your rocks and it always surprises people um, and then to create the artwork is with found objects on purpose because anybody can create art. And if you're using found objects, you don't have to have any art experience. And that's true, very true in this show. We have a lot of new artists who've never done anything before. But I teach, once you kind of have your intention about what you want for a place of your own, what do you, what, if you had a place of your own, what would it be? Found objects just show up and they come to people uh, and then they create their art around it. How do you think people end up relating to difficult parts of their own journeys? How they relate to it. Well, one is actually admitting it and accepting it and putting your finger on it. And we do that from a lot of talking with prompts, using art. And it's not art like finger painting or um, watercolor. It's actually art, deliberate art that gets you to have a thought process or in brings in a thought process, but you're doing it in community with other women going through the same thing. So you're not alone. 
and you learn to share the really hard stuff and you find out somebody else is going through the similar things and all of a sudden you don't feel like you're alone by yourself. So I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. Yeah, no, no, that, okay. that does. Um, uh, and uh, do, do you find that uh, the creative expression uh, aids in healing? Well, it's the, for me, it's the only way you can. It's just, I would love to break down what creative expression means because to a lot of people outside of what we just did, they think creative, creative expression is just like finger painting or throwing some paint on the wall or more just fun. But what we're doing is they're actually having to answer this question with every single object in the piece. Like, I'd love to tell, talk to you more about Yao Jin's piece. I don't know if you heard mm -hmm. me talk about it, but her big issue was perfectionism. And she's an art therapist, but she has not made art because she, and I found out her sisters and her mother all the art degrees. So she felt like she couldn't make something good enough to be considered art. And we just tear that whole thing apart. She made, she wanted to make these clear eggs that said shame inside of them. But I knew what she was doing wasn't gonna work because I know the medium, she was using um, like a gel medium, which is like a soft plastic on balloons. But when it, it didn't dry, so she said the first one exploded. So it got stuff all over her. And the second one, it just collapsed, it imploded. So it just collapsed um, because it's not strong enough to hold anything. It's just a soft medium. It's like a thin plastic. So she didn't know what she was gonna do and it was uh, two weeks before delivery of the art. And I just asked her what the mistakes look like because they're these little tiny things. I said, well, let's put that in the show. And it just changed her whole perspective on what art is. And then she started stitching these little clear balls out of plastic. And then I, we just said, what's your favorite thing? She said, pom-pom balls for some reason. So she's put pom-pom balls and her toys in her piece. So it's about play. Mm -hmm. So that's not a traditional art expression per se. But I always tell people, we always take people outside of the box by just asking questions. And not telling them what traditional art is, because I grew up making found object art. We were poor. My fam I didn't know it, but we didn't have any money, so our neighbors would give us broken plates and broken jewelry. And that's what we made art out of. And Finally, two more questions. So uh, one, just tell me about your piece. I've already taken a little picture of it, but um, <laughs> yeah, but you can tell me about your piece um, behind you. Well, I created, I have about three or four pieces here. And this one's, I don't even know if it's finished yet, but it's about endless possibilities. And I paint from a surreal place to try to keep my, you know, expectations and limitations open. So you just stay open to ideas. And so when people give you suggestions, you're not closed off. So this is about staying open to possibilities. Okay. Yeah. And finally, what do you do to rest? I listen to music now. Like, Cause I got that concussion. So I stopped working so hard. I didn't know that that's what I was doing to myself. I think that's what it was. Cause I didn't have any one accident. I mean, I, I bumped my head a lot. I used to be a volleyball player, but the doctor said it's all cumulative, and, but they don't know. So to rest, I just sit and I look at my Intuit cards, those little collage cards, and, they, and I feel like they talk to me and they give me ideas or perspectives. But I have some favorite music now that just, I have like a playlist that I know elevates my energy and I do that, or I just, I watch YouTube and I find like people that resonate with me. Um, or I just lay down, like right now, I just wanna go to sleep. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's been really intense, but I, I've learned how to have more, create more space where I'm not doing something. Like I have days where I don't have any appointments on the calendar on purpose. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow, well, and what's your favorite song on that playlist? Mm. Well, I, this is crazy, but I am, I just discovered Toto. I'm like a total Toto fanatic. And they, they're R&B. I thought they were just pop, but they're heavy R&B. And I'd say, 
God, there's so many. There's one called Thousand Years that makes me cry. So I have songs that I know make me cry, but it's not bad cry, it's just crying. Like, I feel like somebody's hugging me or something. Mm. So there's Thousand Years, um, and then the main guy that's the main synthesizer player is Steve Picaro, and he has um, The Little Things. And The Little Things I actually have on my lesson plan where I have teach women to do this love letter where they create a collage and they write a love letter to themselves like Martha Zamora's is here where you write something as an adult to yourself when you're a child it's really difficult to do but the other thing I send with that lesson also is music they could so I have three songs right now that are a father singing to their child mostly a daughter, little daughter because they're out of town so much so they're really nurturing songs and that the little things is one of those songs okay thank you so much you're welcome